Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down into bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some concerning news. First up, Hedgeye Risk Management CEO sells all of his Bitcoin. And this is just after a week ago where he said that Bitcoin looked like a long position. So what is going on also? Stansberry Research had on a guest by the name of E.B. Tucker, and he's a big gold bug. And what we're going to go over is, of course, how gold stacks up to Bitcoin. But really, the big thing is how everything is going to play out in the next three to six months, which could cause that store of value narrative to reach all time highs. And big news, Theta Network announces video on demand. So what that means for the streaming platform Theta is that they're going to go direct opposition to YouTube. And the question I ask myself is, I have a streaming key. Why have I done some streaming on Theta? We'll talk about that and exactly how to buy Theta. And lastly, we'll go over Q of the day, which is a pretty good one, which talks about if I had $1,000, where would I invest it into what cryptocurrency project? So we'll get into all that. But first, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So today it is October 6th. It is Tuesday. It is 3 p.m. Everything's going later and later. What do we have? Well, Bitcoin, eh, not too bad. 10.5, uh, down 2%. So uh, in the 24-hour time period, seven days, 1.2. Uh, it's pretty stable. I will take that right now. Ethereum, ooh, takes a little bit of a tumble, down 4% really rocketed past that 350 into that 337 range not too fantastic tether is tether <laughs> xrp 24 cents watch out binance coin still in that fifth position even though their DeFi play really didn't pan out polka dot down massively 12 percent to 369 chain link nine percent 868 just across the board just a big shellacking eos for some reason is up six and a half percent i don't know why probably no good reason who knows let me know in the comment section Maybe you can figure out that little mystery, but everything else has just, just got pummeled. Two and a half percent up for Ethereum Classic. Well, that's strange. The one that had three 51% attacks is going up. So just everything across the board is just taking a beating. How low will we go? Don't know, but I will tell you this, it is not looking good. Look at Uniswap, 13, almost four, well, 14%. You're in finance, which was, uh, I think it topped out at 40,000. Now it's at 16,000 and the hits keep coming so if you foam it into projects this is where it's going to really hurt now if you dca'd dollar cost average in this could be an opportunity to buy things on the low though but it really comes down to what are you comfortable with so let's take a look at some concerning news so this is keith mccullough he's the ceo of uh, hedge high risk management and he was talking about bitcoin all the way back in 2017 and just recently today he said hey i'm I sold all my Bitcoin. So what's going on here? So Keith, hedge at risk management, cash out all Bitcoin. Again, 2017 is when he first announced his big play into the cryptocurrency leader. And today he told his 189,000 Twitter followers, hey, I've sold it all. He didn't provide a reason, but he did retweet something from Luca Balstieri, who said that McCullough understands correlations and he is not a permable. So if he understands correlations and he believes that Bitcoin is correlated to the stock market, what does that say? Well, it says that potentially the stock market, the traditional markets might take a major beat down and we will only see as time progresses. Balstieri continued, he sold all his Bitcoin today. He didn't say he won't buy Bitcoin anymore in the future. So if the USD strengthens, so all the many correlated things to it will go down, Bitcoin included. So there's different lines of thinking here. People like Robert Kiyosaki says that gold and Bitcoin are a hedge against catastrophe. And people put their money into that for an asset allocation or to save themselves from a rising uh, tsunami, which might uh, hit. And the other side is that if the traditional market goes up, that people will take their money out of Bitcoin and gold and put it into the traditional market because they want to make gains in the stock market. So there's two different ways of looking at it. I personally believe that the traditional stock market is way overvalued. People are fumbling in over there like crazy. You've got people buying stocks that were hurts with went, which went through bankruptcy. So they're buying into that, which makes absolutely no sense. And I only see pain and problems along the way, especially for the traditional market. So maybe I'm missing something, but uh, uh, I see some problems coming about around the horizon. So to finish up, Hedgeye Risk Management produces what it calls the holy grail of risk management investing tools. According to McCullough, the firm provides advisory service to clients that manage over $1 trillion in assets. 
My thoughts are this. We just took a look at the market. We saw how bad it was playing out. There's a lot of red today. So if this holds true and McCullough is totally correct and everything starts to slide down more and more and more, but for me and investors, it's really just another day at the office. The same thing happens again and again. Cycles come, cycles go. We're going to see some crashes. We're going to see some peaks and valleys. And is this guy right? Well, a lot of people have bet against Bitcoin many a time, and they've all been proven wrong. So we will see. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Before we jump to the next section, I think this is one of the reasons why the market has done a big tank. So if you're not from the United States, this is the president, Donald J. Trump. And he says, uh, looking to the future of our country, I've instructed my representatives to stop negotiation or negotiating until after the election when, immediately after I win, we will pass a major stimulus bill that focuses on hardworking Americans and small businesses. So what's going on is that the market, all markets have reacted to the president and stated, hey, if we're not getting a stimulus package, this is bad for everybody. So I can see a lot of long-term pain lasting until November, possibly the end of December. And I think this is going to really play into what we're going to talk about right now. Next up, and I want to include this because I think this is where McCullough was going, because there is going to be massive uncertainty. There's going to be a lot of problems coming up, especially with the presidential election, things that are going on with COVID-19, the quantitative easing, the problems with the traditional market. And I understand exactly where this gentleman, E.B. Tucker, is actually coming from, and it makes a total sense. This is from Stansbury Research. If you have not checked out this channel, it is fantastic. They do a lot of great interviews with traditional market players, people in cryptocurrency. They're going to have Raul Powell on pretty soon. So it's a pretty good diversification of people who are on because here we've got E.B. Tucker, who is a uh, definitely a gold bug. He wrote or the author of the book, Why Gold? why now he called a $1,900 gold not too long ago and he was totally spot on and what he's saying right now is that gold is going to go to $2,500 not in like a year or five years by December 31st and he's pretty much putting it all on the line said this is exactly what's going to happen so just for reference E.B. Tucker is this guy he's a lead analyst at Stansbury Investment Advisory and the Bill Bonner Letter Founding partner of uh, KSIR Capital Management, uh, which is an asset management firm, and co-founder KSIR Capital Corporate Finance Advisory, which is focused on the precious metals industry. So to say that this guy knows about gold, yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. So this this first part right here is going to lay it all out about what's going to happen in the next three months. So let's take a listen. Uh, but look, I mean, anybody that read my book sees that this is this is coming in dominoes. So you're going to have numerous dominoes have to fall. And we're only about three innings into the baseball game. I mean, there's six innings left to go. You got to know what's coming next. There's a lot that's coming next. The election is so bullish for gold. It doesn't matter what happens. A Trump uh, victory for second term is, is bullish for gold in different ways. And a, a Biden victory is bullish for gold in other ways. You've got the U.S. Treasury just can't borrow enough money. I mean, they've never seen a dollar they didn't want to borrow and you know we can get into all that but 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 everything is set up and i know the call is shocking from here but uh, well, let's see what happens hold on so that's my question about mccullough on that last article if he took all his money out of bitcoin where did he put it into because hopefully it's not just cash because cash is on fire unless he sees a big dip he got out and he's going to let it all just kind of ride down and then buy back in at a certain point now, E.B. Tucker is saying the exact opposite. He's like, look, gold's going to go up to 2500 And I will tell you right now, if gold is a store of value goes to 2500 you can, I can almost guarantee Bitcoin will go the exact same way. And here's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of charting that goes into this. There's a lot of setup in the market. The entire gold market, every ounce of gold ever mined in human history is only worth $12 trillion. And so this year, you, you've seen you know three to $4 trillion in stimulus go out the door. There's Last night, there was a call from the the house for 2.2 trillion more. I mean, you're almost had a deficit in the U S of half the value of all the gold on the whole planet. So, so look, and a lot of things have happened. I mean, Buffett coming into gold, you know, I wrote in my book about Buffett's negative statements about gold, but why is he coming into gold? Because there's no return on cash. There's no return on bonds. The stock market d is not appealing to anyone that's sensible. And you look at gold and you've just crossed off all the reasons he used to hate gold. I think other people are going to come to this conclusion, but let's make sure we focus on something. Gold is not an investment. It's an asset. Exactly. Gold is an investment. It's an asset, just like Bitcoin, which is the highest performing asset class of the last decade. So just saying. But yeah, I mean, I I, get, I agree with E.B. Tucker. Look, 
if my my thoughts are this, I've always thought this, that the new savings account should be gold, silver, Bitcoin. It should just be gold, silver, Bitcoin. Just a totally makes sense where one has a stability in the traditional sense as gold because it's been around for millennia. And also you have Bitcoin, which is, which is what I consider to be digital gold and can be an excellent store of value. Just put them both together. So here is where me and E.B. Tucker bifurcate or we separate here in our philosophy and what we think about where he's going to talk about cryptocurrency especially Bitcoin. So let's just take a listen. Um, but I've recently just had Michael Saylor on the show uh, um, and he moved his company's cash into crypto. I actually have Raul Powell coming on. He's also moving in, you know, a huge position, 50% of his assets in Bitcoin. And when I asked them, well, why not gold? Their argument is, well, you could keep mining gold. You could pay enough money for someone to find that gold, but you can't do that with Bitcoin. Maybe, I mean, but you can have Pierre Lassonde on your show. I'm sure he'll come on if you ask him and he'll tell you that they haven't found a 50 million ounce deposit well, in a shockingly long time. that's my answer to them. Yeah. But, you know, I guess yeah. they're, well, I guess well, for... Let's, let's get into that for a minute because I, I talk about crypto in my book and I think I do it in a very fair way because there's a, there's a place where crypto is headed and, and it's a place people haven't considered. And I, I wrote this in newsletters for a long time. I don't think people really fully caught on. So I devoted a big chunk of the book to it because I don't think it ends well for crypto. And I think people need to really consider what I'm proposing there. But let's look at gold. Gold, you can melt it down. You, you can't trace it. You can turn it into uh, belt buckles, teeth, jewelry, back into coins, back into bars. And you never know where it comes from. Crypto has ultimately got to go on to a network to be traded. Sure, you can store it cold in a safe on a thumb drive. Sure, you could trade it with someone off market. But as we saw with the kids that that blackmailed uh, Twitter accounts mm -hmm. last year, uh, earlier right. this year, that got crypto, they tracked that crypto down and found those. Yeah. Okay, so my point is, do you want something that's out of the system? If you want something that's out of the system, pure unadulterated gold is the only asset in the world that has no counterparty. Bitcoin still relies on that network to be traded. So a lot to unpack there. And you know what? E.B. Tucker's a pretty smart guy. He's been around the block, seems to know what, he, what he's talking about. It's just that there's just some little discrepancies. First, that is the biggest thing about gold bugs. They always say that, uh, oh, well, we haven't found this uh, any, any new mines out there with, with huge stashes of gold. Yes, I get that. But guess what? The mines that we do have, you cannot tell me. Nobody can tell me. Absolutely nobody can tell me how much gold you can find in each one of those mines. And it seems like we're always finding more. So yes, these huge, enormous stashes may not be found, but you will still keep mining gold. And I don't know when that's actually going to stop. So with Bitcoin, we know, hey, there is a hard cap at 21 million and that is it. And guess what? We're never going to have 21 million because probably four to five million has already been lost over all the years. So that is just one thing. We can debate, and Michael Saylor even talked about this, the uh, CEO of MicroStrategy said, look, I'm not saying that, you know, we're going to find a ton of gold. He goes, but I will debate you that we cannot find more gold. And just by putting more money into it, humans or people will actually start to accelerate the process. And he talked about fracking and how there was a, you know, an oil shortage, a gas shortage. And all of a sudden with fracking, hey, didn't it worked out pretty well. And we don't have that shortage anymore. So again, I don't know how much is going to be found, but we will find more and we will mine more. So that's the first part. The second part is, and this is my favorite, you know, gold bugs always say, well, we can melt it down. We can make, uh, you know, gold watches and rings and, and buckles and stuff like that. Who's doing that? How many people who have, who have gold are melting it down going, hey, you know what? Do this for me or I want to sell it for whatever else. That's not happening as much. People are storing gold as just a store of value and that is what it is for. Now, I don't know how much is actually being used for, you know, gold and, and or for uh, different products, for watches and whatever else. But that is not the majority of reasons why people buy gold. I have gold. And I didn't buy it so I can make a watch or sell it to some watchmaker. I sold it because, or I have it because, it is a great store of value and it's been around for thousands of years. So again, I agree with E.B. Tucker on that on that point. Now he talks about being out of the system and you can use the gold for out of the system. I don't know how many people are, are carrying around gold coins. I'm sure there are. I'm sure they're out there. But when's the last time? You use your gold coin to buy a Lamborghini or whatever you bought it with. I, I just don't see that that whole thing. Maybe in like an apocalypse. Sure, I can see that. But if the apocalypse comes, uh, usually it's just the bigger guy uh, with the more guns who are going to take all your stuff. <laughs> That's just how I see it. And then lastly, you have to understand about Bitcoin. I mean, it is decentralized. It is open source. We can transfer it to anywhere in the world within minutes 
for next to nothing. It is the best performing asset class over the last decade. It used to cost a nickel, and now it costs almost $10,000 and it's why I'm heavily invested into it. So if if gold can match that, then I'm all about it. But I still see Bitcoin has the edge over gold, although I have both. My final thoughts are just that the world's on fire. There's a lot of uncertainty. People are making some pretty stupid moves. And we just have to remember that uh, with uncertainty comes opportunity. And I think in this situation, Bitcoin, gold, and silver are a fantastic play. Just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Oh, before we move on to the last one about uh, Theta, I just want to make mention that uh, my man John McAfee just got arrested for tax evasion charges on top of uh, the NRA uh, CEO, uh, LaPierre. He's under investigation for potential tax fraud. So um, pay your taxes. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm going to say because they're getting these, these big people and they're bringing them down. And it's kind of funny that out of all the times, all the quantitative easing that we're doing, all the different money printing, now we got to pay that, some, that, that back. All of a sudden you get like a John McAfee, a LaPierre, then that, you know, our, our BitNex situation, which just happened. I see a lot more of these things coming down and a lot more heavy hands. And I think a lot of people are going to get put through the grinder because, hey, government needs money. If the government needs money, watch out. If you want to learn about how to pay not so much in crypto taxes, take a look at my link in the description. It talks about crypto IRAs. All right, let's move on to the Theta story. So the Theta story is really great. So Theta Network announces video on demand and launch event with blockchain's biggest influencers. So this is great news for everybody, especially for Theta holders and also for influencers or people on YouTube who are stuck on the platform because there's nothing else really out there. I mean, look, look what happened with Joe Rogan. Spotify came along and goes, hey, Joe, we're going to be 100 million, 100 million, maybe. It might be more, it might be less, I don't know. He said, sure, I'll do that. And then off he went. And then here we have Theta, which is a fantastic platform. And actually, I have a streaming key. And the question I have myself is, damn it, why haven't I done a live stream? I got to do that this week, but I'm so busy with so many other things. So I'm going to do that this week. I swear to you, I swear to myself, I will do a live stream on Theta. What's going on here? So Theta Labs has launched video on demand support. So if you don't know, Theta looks like this. And it's all a bunch of live streaming stuff. Live streaming, live streaming. Games, anime, uh, different people who are just doing whatever games they're doing. And uh, it's pretty interesting. It's it's fantastic, but it's all live streaming, right? So if you want to live stream, this is the place to go. However, now they're going to do video on demand. That means it's just like YouTube. You put up a, a video, people click on it, watch it at their leisure. Fantastic news and more diversity and opportunity for people such as myself and other people like Crazy for Cryptos and Alex Masculi and Guy and Crypto Nobs and all those guys that, uh, you know, are just grinding away. There's another opportunity out there. So anyhow, so the video on demand support as part of its core platform upgrade and a move to bring popular streamers and influencers from centralized platforms on board and has been supported by some of the biggest names in crypto. Starting on October 15th, right around the corner, crypto streamers, Data Dash, Crypto Beatles, Trader Cobb, Crypto Crow, among others who boast a combined following of nearly 550,000 YouTube subscribers will take part in a week-long series of streams, interviews, and premieres as Theta.tv launches its VOD. Anyhow, then it just talks about, you know, it's video on demand. So that's great news. I cannot wait to actually start doing this. I need to do, I mean, just the actual live stream. But this is good for everybody. And I will just make mention that um, Theta, in my opinion, is going to be huge. It is why I have invested into it. And if you don't know, it's looking to solve the issue of streaming services or getting 4k hd types of streams and just you know overall bandwidth out to the people not just in first world countries but other places in like third world countries and the way they do it is you just sign up as you know you can be a guardian node click on the join today you download download it right here and then you earn t fuel for allowing them to use your unused resources for your bandwidth and that's pretty cool right but just so you know, here's the enterprise validator nodes. And these are the big guys. Google, who owns YouTube, <laughs> Binance, Blockchain, and Gumi or Gummy. I don't know what they are. Tell, help me out in the comment section. So again, I think this is a fantastic opportunity. If you haven't taken a look at Theta, definitely do that today. And uh, if you need help buying it, check out this video over at Digital Asset News Clips. I made uh, a second channel for two reasons. First is because some of these videos go too long, so I break them down into clips so they're super simple. Like this one's only eight minutes. And the second reason is if YouTube shuts down my primary channel, I got a backup. 
Actually, I got a backup on a backup. It's called Theta. So check that out. I will put that in the very final video so you can take a look. And also, if you had time, uh, go over there to Digital Asset News Clips and uh, subscribe. I do some exclusive clips just for that channel just to get that thing rolling. All right, so that's it for that. Let's go into Q of the day. It's going to be pretty quick. This is from Xavier. It was a fantastic question, so let's jump in the office. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the office for Q of the day. We've been doing this in a while, actually about, uh, about four or five days or so. As you can tell by this fantastic uh, gray beard that I'm growing, uh, I'm an old guy. What are you going to do? So anyhow, so this was a pretty good one. It's from uh, Xavier. He says, hey, Dan, I follow your YouTube channel for a while, and thanks to you, I'm ready to start, but I don't know where. Can you please help me? I can start just with $1,000. Where should I place it? I can add up to $1,000 every month, but that's my limit. I'm a worker and don't have much, and for how long will I have to keep it there? So, Xavier, this is, this is probably uh, one of the most sought-after questions in all of cryptocurrency. Where do I put my money? And it really comes down to where are you in life? Where are you in what you're doing? When I got my first job, uh, this was a UPS. It was like one of my first shops uh, when I was a kid. And uh, they did 401ks. And uh, they had actually you know, talked to me and said, hey, where do you want to put this money? Because you're so young, maybe you should actually uh, diversify in something a little bit more risky. And then uh, you know, maybe later on, uh, rebalance your portfolio and some things a little bit more safe. Because the theory goes that as you are younger, you are able to take more risks on and of course, then of course, the uh, profits could potentially be, be greater than that. So uh, that is one of those things. So for me, I always think to myself, well, first of all, I can't, uh, Xavier, I can't give you any advice. I can't tell you where to put it because I'm not a financial advisor. However, <laughs> if I'm looking back on my older self or my younger self, and I, let's say I'm in my 20s and I'm just starting out, right? And I'm making a thousand dollars like like you are. That's about how much I made back then. Uh, I would think to myself, you know what? I probably want to balance my portfolio to something that's a little bit more on the risky side, and then uh, balance it out with some things a little bit more safer. So, if you're talking about just in cryptocurrencies, let's just go with cryptocurrencies. I'm not going to talk about uh, real estate. I'm not going to talk about metals. I'm not going to talk about anything else like that, uh, or whatever. Uh, let's just stick with cryptocurrency. So for me, if I'm a younger person, I would probably put uh, a good amount, let's say, I don't know, uh, 30 to 50% into some riskier, uh, below the top 50, if, if I can get my hands on them, uh, digital assets. So um, I can only talk to you about what I personally own, and I really can't you know, go farther than that. I mean, I can't tell you about potato foot coin or something crazy, which everybody seems to like to ask me about. I have no idea. So if I want to go a little bit lower about some things that are probably potentially coming up over the next you know, years, then I would look at something like Celsius token. I would look at something like Theta token, which you know, we went over today. And I would look to you know, put a good chunk of my money into those because I think they're going to grow. And the reason why uh, is because um, they have a great team behind them. They have a mission. They solve a real world problem. So I can definitely see putting that into that. And then maybe rebalance it into something like, you know, 25%, 20%, maybe Ethereum, and then maybe another 20% into Bitcoin or 25, depending on what you want to do. And then hopefully that'll, that'll balance itself out. But again, if I'm younger and I can take the risks, I'm going to take more risks because there's a higher reward. Now, let's say I'm in my 30s and I got a couple kids and uh, I'm looking at, well, what am I going to do with these kids? Uh, how am I going to pay for everything as far as college and the mortgage and everything else? Maybe I don't want to be so risky. Uh, just in cryptocurrencies, right? So maybe I want to allocate a good portion of that, maybe like 50, 60% into Bitcoin, because I'm not going to get the, the, the most fantastic rewards. Let's just be honest. Uh, Bitcoin can tap, can top out. Some people will say a million, but I think those people are crazy. Some people will say 100,000. I think those people are conservative. So if I want to look at Bitcoin, well, it's about 10,000 today. So maybe it'll go up to 50, 75, 100,000 relatively, uh, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm going to put a bunch into uh, Bitcoin. Ethereum would be another safe bet. And uh, I see that everything is built on Ethereum. So if you just don't know about DeFi, stick it into, into, into Ethereum. And then kind of look down and do what I do, which is hedge your bets against what you think could be uh, a smart contract platform, uh, which would be like, you know, the Cardano's and the EOS and things like that. But uh, you probably want to put more into a safer asset. Now let's say you're moving forward 
and I'm just looking in the mirror and I'm going, hey, what do you want to do? So I'm going to put a ton of my assets into uh, Bitcoin because the older that I am, the more I want to be. And let's be honest, cryptocurrency digital assets is a pretty volatile space. So I want to put my money uh, on the least volatile of those assets. And then off we go. So uh, that's what I would do. Now, if I'm in my 60s or something like that, it's pretty much all Bitcoin. If I'm just talking about cryptocurrencies because that's the safest bet that you can possibly do. So uh, uh, Xavier, I hope that answers your question. I can't give, you know, like exactly what, what I can tell you to do, but that is what I would do if I was in my 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, I would just uh, allocate to a little bit riskier, to a little bit safer. And that's really all I got. All right, let's jump back. All right, that's it. So thanks for sticking with me to the very end. I really appreciate it. If you don't know, there is a link in the description of every one of my videos. It talks about the exchange fees and wallet fees and just a basic assessment of what I use and have used and recommend. I go everything from Coinbase to my one, two, three punch, which is uh, Celsius, Voyager and Kraken. And I just tell you, you know, here's what the fees are. Uh, here's what the interest that you can accrue from just having it on there, if that's even an option. And I go over everything from Coinbase because people need an alternative to that. Uh, Binance, Uphold, Abra, SimpleSwap, Uniswap, uh, Cash App, eToro, don't recommend them and crypto.com. So it's all right there for you to take a look at of what I actually use and don't use and what people have said. Also, there's affiliate links, just so you know, you don't have to use those. You can go right to Kraken and sign up for Celsius or whatever else. But if you use my affiliate links, you get between 10 and $25. So it's totally up to you. Again, thanks for sticking with me to the end. Really appreciate it. See you on the next one.